So starting with data structures in Python. So I defined data structure already. It is nothing but a logical ordination of data. If you look at that way in Python, there are two types of data structure comes in. One is the built-in data structures, another is user-defined data structures. When you say built-in data structures, you can call it as a standard data structures also. Those are the data structures that comes along with the language. Like you have list, tuple, dictionary, and sets. And each has a different purpose in Python. Whereas when you say user-defined data structure, you can have stack, queue, tree, linked list, graph, hash map, or anything. So user-defined simply means something you developed. It is not something you know the language has given when you say I have developed you can develop anything here We have listed some which is considered as standard and which is actually written in books That does not mean you cannot come up with a new data structure on your own You can also write a new data structure and you can call user defined. That's why the name user defined That means somebody developed that data structure. That's all so this is like a free thing You can develop as many as you want, but this is not like that These are something which comes with Python and they never change now. What are the building data structure? Let's understand about them so in built-in data structures you have list tuple sets and uh, dictionary and when you say list lists can have heterogeneous data when you say heterogeneous data that means it can have mixed data types that means it can have a list can have data types of integer float strings boolean any data type that's why it is called heterogeneous when you call data heterogeneous it means the data types are different for each of the value or it's you can simply call it as a mixed data items and these lists are mutable when we say mutable which means once they are created you are allowed to modify them even after modifying them the address won't change whereas in the case of tuples which is not possible so tuples are immutable and dictionary also mutable that means once you create you can even modify the value without changing the address and dictionary basically is a key value pair kind of data structure when coming to tuples they are nothing but read only list they are not mutable like i said they are read only list that means once you create it you cannot modify it and they are faster than list the reason being being faster than list is because the way of organization the memory organization happens in tuple it's a fixed memory segment that's why the memory access is faster in case of tuples now coming to sets it's completely an unordered collection of uh, unique elements whereas when you take list and tuple they are ordered collection when i say unordered collection that means there is no order preserved there and it can come in any order when you access the elements in sets and sets are basically mutable that means once you add it you can have even more elements added or deleted those are all possible now coming to user defined data structure you have stack queues linked list graphs trees and hash maps so what are basically algorithms so i would call algorithm like this i mean rather than understanding this definition which is written which is like a textbook picked up definition i would say algorithm is nothing but a set of steps on how to solve a problem the program actually you use directly the language instruction to write it algorithm is more of a free from where actually you put what are the steps you have to uh, actually we need to do in order to complete a particular task that's what algorithm is about so before you write any algorithm or sometimes people call it as a pseudo code you need to keep certain things in mind first thing is what is the exact problem and second thing is from where to start third thing is where to stop and fourth thing is in case you have any decision making or looping statements those things need to be put and if there are any intermediate steps those you can put and then finally you review what you're writing what is the properties of a good algorithm when can you call a good algorithm so you can call good algorithm when you are clearly written in understandable fashion and it is finite when i say finite it should have a speak say some set of steps it's not like infinite set of steps and you say that the algorithm we don't know how much big it is and it should also have a clear information of what is the input output expected from that algorithm and every step must have a defined output it, if it is a computation you should know what is the uh, result of it if it is not computation and input or output you should know what you are going to achieve with that step and they should be flexible when i say flexible that means they are allowed to change whenever required and these steps you should use by making use of some of the programming language fundamentals so what does programming language fundamentals is whenever you write branching conditions you have to indent the code properly that kind of best practices you should follow in algorithms also so that when you switch from algorithm to code it is easy for you now what are different types of algorithm classes so if you see there are three types of algorithm classes which is like divide and conquer dynamic programming and greedy algorithms so divide and conquer is as simple as given a problem you first divide into sub parts and solve each problem by dealing with them one by one whereas when you say dynamic programming here the pro you will divide the problem into parts but you will remember the results of the previous sub parts which you already worked upon and applies it to similar problems that means let's say for example you applied a technique of searching the same technique searching you can apply in another algorithm by using this dynamic programming technique 
and coming to greedy algorithm the greedy algorithm here what you do is it is it is all about you try to take the easiest step while solving a problem without worrying about the complexity of the future steps so coming to this part like you know in case you guys are interested you can join our uh, which is called python certification training which is more about teaching you foundation of python it expects no knowledge in programming to right from making you good in programming this is about the basic python course we have and you can check with our support team in case you are interested to join this and coming to continuation our topic it's a tree traversal algorithms we have so traversal is nothing but navigating okay when you somebody says i'm traversing from one place it is like you know how you are doing that journey how you are moving from one particular step to another so trees basically as a non-linear data structure they have certain root nodes and uh, branch nodes and when you say tree traversal it simply means that each node in the tree you traverse by at least touching each node once minimum okay sometimes it could be multiple more than one also but the idea here is at least once you should touch it so if you consider this as a tree you can call it as a binary tree because every node has two branches in this case if you are saying i have done a tree traversal you should touch at least one two three four five at least one it could be more than one also there are different types of traversal algorithms you know you have in order traversal pre-order traversal and post-order transfer traversal in order traversal is more about you refers to visiting the left node followed by root and then right nodes when you say pre-order traversal like the name says first you visit the root node then you follow up with left and right nodes whereas when you say post order traversal here you visit the left then right then the root node so here the context is based on when you are visiting root node based on that the pre and post order traversal comes in sorting algorithm like the name says it's more about how you sort the data and you have different techniques to sort merge sort bubble sort insertion sort selection and cell sort everybody sorts the data only nothing different but the way they sort or the way they actually achieves this sorting that means arranging the data in an ascending order or if you want you can do in descending order also how best they do it that's what each algorithm differs some algorithms might do much much faster than other algorithms so merge sort starting with the way it achieves is it first uses this divide and conquer problem where the given list is divided into smaller list and then you compare with the adjacent list and then you reorder them accordingly that's how merge sort happens in the case of bubble sort bubble sort actually does the comparison of each element and then sort adjust elements adjacent elements if they are not in a specified order when it comes to insertion sort as the name says while the elements are getting inserted into the list itself you try to put in the exact place so it is coming in a proper order that's what the insertion sort is selection sort is one of the sorting algorithm which takes more time because each time you start again from the beginning you pick one element and try to compare with all the elements and again you will do the same thing with in each pass you have one more sort which is missing here which is called radix sort also and coming to shell sort insertion sort if you see it picks one element of a given list and a place and place it exact sort i think this is wrong shell sort definition is wrong here there's no shell sort here it is the same thing like what is being picked for see there's nothing about shell sort here it's a miss from our side now coming to searching algorithms searching algorithms is all about how you identify a particular element in a set of elements given so for that also we have different techniques we have right from the linear search which is the basic search we write in most of the algorithms to binary search exponential and interpolation search in the case of binary search i'll tell you what exactly happens is it is a divide and conquer model where exactly you take the entire list and divide into two halves and again each half you take again identify the midpoint and again do the same until you find the element you want to detect that's what the binary search is so binary the name is because you divide the data into two halves every time in the case of linear search it is like you take one element and compare with each element until the end that's why it is called linear search because you go one by one and uh, here comes the algorithm analysis which is a very important factor in terms of algorithms and when you say algorithm analysis you can measure algorithm how good it performs in terms of speed as well as storage as well most of the time we measure in terms of how much faster it executes which is where the worst case best case and average case comes you have two techniques here one is a priori and another is posterior analysis and in a priori analysis you assume all factors are assumed to be constant and does not affect the implementation whereas the posterior is what we do generally where we worry about the time complexity or execution time of the algorithm and space complexity are gathered most of the time we do this posterior analysis okay thanks guys thanks for joining and having a good discussion about this see you all all the best